Good. 
to lift our hands. All of our living rooms, whether you're in the kitchen, hallelujah, you're sitting in the living room, or you're even in your bedroom. Ah, all under the sounding of our voices this morning. Can we just adore the King of Kings? Can we just exalt the Lord of Lords? Hallelujah. Worthy Jesus. Worthy Jesus. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This morning, we're going to be approaching the throne of grace. We're going to be asking God to come down and to touch us. We're going to be asking God to come down and saturate Almighty God our souls. We're going to be asking God to have his way in this service this morning. We're going to ask God to come down in a special way. Save souls to the utmost. He doesn't need anybody to do anything. But God can touch you right where you are. Don't say that you don't have an altar worker. Just cry out to God from where you're sitting. He's touched with the feelings of your infirmities. He will hear your hearts cry. Hallelujah this morning. Lord Jesus, King of all kings, Lord of all lords, our keeper, our sustainer, our balm in Gilead, we approach your throne, your throne this morning. Jesus, wash almighty God, cleanse and purify, make whole before your face this morning. Lord Jesus, we stand in your presence. Almighty God, Jesus of Nazareth, we cry unto you and we ask of you almighty to be with us. Lord Jesus, comfort Almighty God the hearts that are filled with fear. Comfort Almighty God those that have feeble knees this morning. Lord Jesus, lift up the weak hands, Almighty God, and let them know that it is well, that you're the balm in Gilead, that God you care and you see and you understand that nothing catches you by surprise. This morning, God, as we exalt your name, as we lift you up, almighty God, there are mothers that are concerned about their children. There are fathers, God, that is concerned about how will they provide for their families. There are grandmothers, God, that are concerned, almighty God. Right now, Jesus, send a visitation. Almighty God, send your holy angels to comfort and to speak peace this morning not only over this congregation but over this entire world we place almighty God the governments of this world into your hands Lord Jesus order their steps in your words mighty God of Daniel you knew this would face us there is nothing that catches you by surprise but in everything we give thanks for this is the will of God concerned concerning us. Lord Jesus, we exalt you this morning. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Sustain and keep. Give us a word in troubled times as we lift our hands. Lord Jesus, touch those that are sick across this world. Help the almighty God to make their calling and election sure. Hallelujah. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory and we say thank you. In Jesus' name, can we just lift our hands? Can we just thank the Lord Jesus for hearing? Can we just thank him for answering? Hallelujah. Can we turn our Bibles to Isaiah chapter 12? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are to give God thanks. Hallelujah. And in that day, thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast anger with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall he draw water out of the wells of salvation. 
and in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, the inhabitants of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitants of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. We'll be singing from our Pentecostal hymnals this morning, Joy Unspeakable, hymn 130. Come on, stand to your feet and lift up the name of Jesus. I have found His grace is all complete. He supplied every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am free and free indeed. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory, joy. Unspeakable and full of glory that has, has never yet been told. I have found the pleasure I once craved. It is joy and peace within. What a wondrous blessing I am saved from the awful God of sin. It is joy unspeakable and full of Glory, full of glory, full of glory, joy, unspeakable and full of glory that has, has never yet been told. I have found that hope so bright and clear, living in the realm of grace. Oh, the Savior's presence is so near. I can see his smiling face. Oh, it is joy, unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It's joy, unspeakable and full of glory that has never yet been told. I have found the joy no song can tell. Its waves of glory roll. It is like a great overflowing well, springing up within my soul. Oh, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory that has never yet been One more time, this is joy. Joy, unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It's joy, unspeakable and full of glory that has as never yet been. One last time, one last time. It's joy, unspeakable and full of. We're talking about the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory is joy, unspeakable and full of glory that has, has never yet been told. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen. We are here this morning to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There's none like him and there's none to be compared to him. The song says, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the very same the name of our God is to be praised sing us can you raise that one for me oh, from the rising of the sun yes unto the going down of the same the name of the Lord is to be praised from the rising of the sun from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same the name 
of the Lord is to be praised. Praise God. Praise be the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. From the rising. From the rising of the sun. And to the going down of the sun. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. To be praised. From the rising of the sun. From the rising of the sun. Hallelujah. To the bowing down of the saints, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. From the rising, from of, the the rising of the sun, to the bowing down of the saints. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Isaiah saw the Lord. Isaiah saw the Lord. Isaiah saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up. He was high and lifted up. And his strength filled the temple. He was high and lifted up. And his strength the angels, the angels cry holy, hallelujah, the angels cry holy, the angels cry holy is the Lord, Isaiah saw oh, the Lord, Isaiah saw the Lord, He was he was lifted up. Lifted up. Yes, and his strength filled the temple. The angels cry holy. The angels cry holy. The angels cry holy. holy. My God, the angels cry holy is the Lord. Let's sing it again. Isaiah saw the Lord. Yes, Isaiah saw the Lord. Hallelujah. Isaiah saw the Lord. Come on. And his strength filled the temple. He was high and lifted up. And his strength filled the temple. The angels. The angels cried holy. The seraphim, the seraphim. The angels cried holy. The angels cried holy. The holy. The angels cried holy. Come on. One more time. I say a sad alarm. Somebody. A God of all stop. Yes. I saw the Lord. Yes, Jesus. He was high and lifted up, and his strength filled the temple. He was high and lifted up, and his strength filled the temple. The angels, the angels cried holy. Yes, the angels cried holy. The angels cried holy is the Lord. Cried holy, the angels cried holy. Come on, somebody. The angels cried holy. The angels cried cry holy. Is the Lord. Let's do one more time from the top. I say it for the Lord. 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 He was high and lifted up. He was high and lifted up. Yes. And he said, "Fill the temple." The angels cry holy. 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 The angels cry
the Lord of Lords, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. I can picture Isaiah. Amen. At that time, Amen. Seeing the angels crying, Holy to the Lord. Hallelujah. Holy. 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 Holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Is there anybody right now who wants to just begin to worship him? Close your eyes and begin to worship the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. There's a song that says, I will praise you, Lord, with every breath that I take. Hallelujah. I will praise you, Lord. With every breath. With, with every, every breath, breath that I take. I will praise. I will praise you, Lord. This promise I this make. This promise I make. Hallelujah. Should it turn
is a sweet presence of the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. Amen. As I'm hearing, I remember the scripture where, amen, that woman came in with her alabaster box. Amen. And she broke it. Amen. It was a valuable thing. Worth, I think, a whole month wage. Amen. And she broke it. And the disciples, they, they spoke their minds. They were saying, why is she wasting the oil? Amen. But that's what worship is. Worship is in giving of your best. Giving of everything, irrespective of what others are saying. You know the cost of the oil in your alabaster box. You know what God did for you. You know the fact that you're alive and well today. You know, irrespective of what is going on around you, hallelujah, that you're able still to give God praise and worship. Can I tell you that the issue from the beginning was always about praise and worship. The devil wants your worship. Amen. But this morning we're going to give God our entire being. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are worthy to be praised. Amen. Praise is what I do. Praise God. Praise is what I do. Focusing so much on Corona. 
I mean, we have called Corona so many times, but this morning we are going to declare the name of Jesus. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. This thing couldn't come about unless Jesus allowed it to be. And the fact that Jesus allowed it to be, we're going to give God praise. Amen. We're going to give God praise because in this season, amen, God is going to get the glory. It's a setup. Devil think that he's going to, but it's a setup. Because somebody is viewing in, somebody is turning back to God, somebody is giving God praise this morning. That's due to his name. I want to greet you again in the mighty name, the exalted name, the matchless name, the name of Jesus. Amen. And I wonder if you could just, amen, even on the live stream right now, just shout a praise to God. Type out a praise. Give God your best praise on the live stream. Type it out. Send it in the atmosphere. And those that are here, give God your best praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We do the good thing about praise and worship is that we, you know, worship doesn't mean that we have to be confined to the same place. Worship means that irrespective of where you are, amen, we can give God praise that's due to him. It's a setup, amen, but God is getting ready to give us the victory in this time, amen. I want to greet you, and I'm going to ask, amen, Mr. Murray, amen, to come and to greet you, the saints and our online visitors alike, in the mighty name of Jesus, God bless you as you come. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Let's praise the Lord, everyone. Praise God. Let's praise him one more time. Hallelujah. Just want to take the time right now to greet you all in the matchless name of Jesus. We're so happy to be called by that name. We're so happy that he is God. There's nobody else that could do the things that he needs to do as God. You know, we couldn't manage, but he's the only one that could fit that role. And I just want to greet all our online visitors, all the saints that are here this morning. You know, continue to worship the Lord with us. And in spite of wherever in the world you are, God is there. If I take the wings of the morning and fly to the uttermost part of the earth, he is there. So God bless you. If you continue to call on his name, meditate on him, I'm sure there's a blessing in store for you. In Jesus' name. There's a song, but as the singers to help me, you know, one of the things that Isaiah did when he saw the Lord is that he, for the first time, probably, he got a revelation of who God is. There's a song that says, the fullness of the Godhead is all in him. Amen. The mighty God is Jesus. The Prince of Peace is he. The everlasting Father. The King eternally. The wonderful in wisdom. By whom all things were made. It's all in Him. It's all in Him. It's all in Him. The fullness of the Godhead is all in Him. It's all in Him. It's all in Him. The mighty God is Jesus. It's all in Him. Yes. Yes. Jehovah, Lord of all, the omnipresent Spirit who fills the universe. Yes. The answer and the high priest, the Lamb for sinners slain. Hallelujah. The power of redemption, oh glory to His name. It's all in Him. It's all in Him. It's all in Him. The fullness of the Godhead is all in Him. It's all in Him. It's all in Him. Oh God, for whom we wait. Yes, will be the God we pray. Our bits when we created. When Jesus comes again, no, He will come and save us. For oh, King and Priest to be. For in Him dwells our fullness. And Lord of all is He. It's all in Him. It's all 
to know that Jesus is not a third person in the Trinity. It's a privilege to know that the fullness of the Godhead. My God. Can I tell you something? Paul never needed to say the fullness of the Godhead, you know. Because the moment that he said the Godhead was in him, speaks to the fact that everything that makes God is already in Jesus. But he wanted the church of Colossae to get it correct. So he put emphasis. He said the fullness of the Godhead. What a great God. That's why when you call Jesus, you don't need to worry. My God, it covers every situation. He's the Alpha. I like that verse. He's the Omega. He's the beginning. He's the ending. The living word incarnate. The help. So the fact that he's the big God is, a, is beyond that. He's the helpless sinner's friend because when you are dead in trespasses and sin, the big God, the big God, put on flesh. My God, he becomes the helpless sinner's friend. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love the fact that Jesus is bigger than Corona. I love the fact that Jesus is bigger than every pandemic that has ever come on this earth. I thank God that it took him by surprise. And I thank God that I'm a part of the church triumphant. And as the Apostle Paul says, whether I live or die, it really don't matter. Jesus has a way of doing some things that will blow your mind, you know. He said to his disciples, Lazarus, sleep. He said, well, if he must sleep, we don't have to worry. He said, make it plain to them, Lazarus is dead. Amen. And he said, I am glad. Can you imagine? What a God. I can I tell you that some things are happening and people are being troubled by what is happening around them. But I think Jesus is glad. <laughs> because for the first time, some people are acknowledging the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's all in Him. It was never in Buddha. Selassie can't save you. But the great God that came 2,000 years ago and rolled himself in flesh. I love him. 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 Amen. There's a little song. And I love the fact that at the end of the day, I'm going to know him. The song says, I shall know Jesus. I shall know him. Amen. When redeemed by his side, I shall stand. You know, the woman who wrote that song was blind. Amen. But it probably in her mind, she had some hope. But for me, I am happy that even though I don't see Jesus now, but there's coming a day. Amen. When all of this is going to pass away, and I shall know Jesus. Hallelujah. That song has been in my heart for about two weeks now. I shall know Jesus. Singers, help me. I shall know Jesus. I shall know Jesus. I shall know Thank you. 
shall know I shall know oh god I shall know him I shall know him by the bricks of the nails can you hum it softly I shall know Jesus Vision and above it all, can you picture that day when you're before him? That man that was on the cross, hallelujah! And they pierce his hands and they pierce his feet and they put a crown of thorn on his head. I shall know, do it again, do it again, amen. And they pierce him head and blood. Flow. Your picture that day when you're standing before the king of kings, the one that said, Look, I will not allow you to die, amen. Because he knew that if you died in your sin, it would be eternal death, it would be eternal separation from him. But he shed blood at Calvary's cross. I can't imagine that day when I'm before the king of kings. No wonder they took off their crown, the 24 elders, and they said, Holy. You are to receive glory and honor because you have redeemed us by your blood. I shall know Jesus. Sing it. I shall know. Worship not a physical or just an emotional response to what is happening. And can I tell you that worship is not an excitement from a crowd? Hallelujah. Can I tell you that worship is not just about attending church? Can I tell you that worship is not an aesthetic appreciation? But when you worship God, you worship God because, hallelujah, you know that you know that you know. You could be on your Isle of Patmos this morning. You can be in the Lord's, in the spirit of the Lord. I'm happy that I've got to know Jesus. Jesus. 
Jesus. Jesus. Jesus. Ai, 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 ai. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. I want to encourage somebody one more time with this song. It says, He leadeth me. Oh, blessed. Sometimes, don't get me wrong, I'm apostolic, 
I love the jumping and the skipping and I love the dancing and I love it. But sometimes when you're going through your hard times and your troubled times, it's when God does come and does talk to you and look at heart and give that sweet song that says, Look your man, look your man, I'm leading you, I'm holding you, I'm keeping you. Hallelujah. Those times where we can't even walk and Jesus just lifts up and carry us. Thank you, Jesus. I believe we're getting the victory this morning. I believe the devil is backing off this morning. Because somebody's beginning to realize that God's hand is in it. God's hand is in it. And God will never put more on you than you can be. Some of us go through harder times than others, but God will never put more on you. Hallelujah, that you can be. But the encouraging thing is this, that there's coming a day when the Bible says the trump of God will sow. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the clouds. I'm looking forward for that day. Jesus. 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 There's another encouraging song I want to go on. It says, Yes, Jesus loves me.
he has shown himself strong every time on the behalf of those that yes love him he knows how to take care he knows how to fix situations he knows how to make the wrong right he's just a great big wonderful God somebody praise the Lord one more time put your hands together wherever you are and give the Lord a clap offering of praise he is worthy amen to be praised no I just want to say to somebody today you are wondering how is it that God could allow the situation like this to continue so long to the extent that people are not even getting saved because the church doors are closed everywhere and folks are in their homes listening and even if they listen and get convicted how are they going to be baptized in Jesus name how are they going to be filled with the Holy Ghost and who is going to be blessing the babies that are from the community and all of that well can I tell you that even as we were here Minister Martin just said he feels the victory in the house already but you know a few of us have to be here but let me tell you how God does his thing and how he works in mysterious ways is wonders to perform so here is a, a mother with her little boy who have been listening to the word, who have been tuning in to church online. And the youngster was so convicted and convinced he wanted to be baptized in Jesus' name. And he wants the gift of the Holy Ghost. Well, he hasn't gotten the Holy Ghost as yet, but he was desperate to get baptized in water. And so we just called one of our ministers from St. Catherine. And we said, Brother Cook, come over here right now. And we spoke to the mother from before. And we said, Mother, bring the boy today. And so while service is going on here, a mother with her son was on the way with her boy. While service is going on here, uh, Brother Cook was on his way from Spanish Town and the two of them collided right on the grounds beside of the baptismal pool. So while we were in here worshipping, here was Brother Cook over there in the water with the youngster, mask on, observing the protocol, but putting God first. And that boy, while we were here just now, went down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. I am telling you that God is still at work in spite of what is happening. The church of the living God is moving through the land. Somebody praise the great God Almighty. Services are going on and Sister Marsha was at work and right there in the office wherever the, she and her team gathered. One young lady who watched the sessions and was moved and pricked by the word that young lady said I need to receive God into my life and though we weren't in church church was in the office because a child of God was there and she directed her as to what to do and so the, the young lady went home convicted and convinc convinced and I believe a few days after she came to work and before they could get on the job to do what was to be done. I, I'm not sure if it was before or after. But the young lady started to cry. And Sister Marsha got over to her and they sat down and she started to reach out after the living God. And before long, right in the laps of Sister Marsha, her co-worker lifted her hands and spoke in tongues as the Holy Ghost came. And right there in the office, that young lady received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And we are going to be making arrangements because she too is going to be baptized very shortly in water in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I feel victory in the house. 
Yeah, we might not be here in the sanctuary in our numbers, but the church is over there, and the church is over there, and right across the length and, and breadth of Jamaica where the church is. Can I let you know, can I declare this morning that God is still filling people with the Holy Ghost right in their homes, right in the offices, and people are still taking on the name of Jesus in water baptism, and we give God thanks. Put your hands together for the great God of heaven. He is worthy to be praised. I might as well tell you also, I might as well tell us also, since I'm bragging about how good our God is, I might as well let us know that about three ladies called to make arrangement to come either to the office or right in here to bless their babies because they say not another day not anymore we are going to have the baby growing up without the coverage over their lives that we know can happen when the hand of the minister is laid upon the child and so very shortly, three little ones are going to be dedicated to the living God in this COVID environment. God is still working. Somebody needs to understand. All we must do is to be faithful to God. If we are at home, serve the Lord with gladness. If we are at home, clap your hands and glorify God. If we are at home, just do what we know to do to serve the Lord with gladness and he will continue to work because absolutely nothing that can happen can stop the work and the move of God because our God is sovereign. Oh, can we praise the Lord? And so we magnify the great God of heaven. I'm happy to announce victory. I'm happy to declare those things so that people can know that what we are doing is not in vain. Somebody is watching. Somebody is being convinced. Somebody is being convicted. The word of God is permeating the atmosphere. And it is still reaching into the hearts of men. And God is still moving by his spirit. Let me welcome all of us. Amen. Here in Jamaica. Right across the world wherever you are and you're tuning in welcome to service one more time welcome to the lord's table welcome to supper because we are going to be having communion we are going to be feasting and fellowshipping amen in the presence of the lord and so we thank god for amen this time of fellowship of worship praise and thanksgiving this time when we're going to be sitting down at the table. Amen. And just remembering who our God is and the great things that he has done. Amen. In our lives. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to be reading about three or four verses. Amen. From the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter number 48. And I'm going to be reading verses 17 through to 20. And we will just go through. Relatively quickly today. Amen. Because right afterwards, right afterwards, we are going to be going into supper. And so, we, we want to be very timely. Amen. In our delivery. A simple word. A straight word. And Genesis chapter number 48. And his father refused. 
and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly, his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. And he blessed them that day, saying, In thee shall Israel bless, saying, God make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And he set Ephraim before Manasseh. Praise God. Can we bow our heads one more time? I invite Minister Murray to come and just to bless the word in Jesus' name. Put your hands together one more time. Wherever the church is right now, put your hands together and give the Lord a clap offering of praise. Yes, he's worthy. Yes, he's worthy. Yes, he's worthy. Yes, he is worthy. I have found God to be very deliberate in the way that he deals with us as his people. Yes, we know that God is a God of order. And we know that he works in his season. And so he has his time set. A particular season when he would operate in a particular way and that has been how he did his thing with his people Israel. He had established a particular order and he would normally flow in the established order. But because God is sovereign, amen, we find that from time to time he changes the order he steps out of what he would normally do he steps out of the somehow normal way that we would expect him to operate and he does things as he sees fit after all god is sovereign Amen. There is nobody that can give him counsel or advice to say, God, you're doing it the wrong way, or Father God, you should, having considered the matter, this is a better way of doing it. There is nobody that can give counsel to God in this way. And so he, because he is sovereign, and because he does things according to his own counsel, he moves and goes around the rule. Somebody say, why would God bend the rule? Amen, if the rule is already there. But we need to understand that God is the rule. 
and so he does what he pleases. He might have established a particular order and would normally work in the order, but because he is God, he will do what he wills. And he therefore, if he chooses, and we will see as we go quickly down, that many times he opts to go around the established order to bless people whose heart are set towards serving him. Oh, can we praise the Lord? I have found that the God that we serve is very keen and on how genuine and true we as his people are to him. He's very keen on how dedicated we are. God seems to take note. God seems to be very particular in how he assesses folks. A man or woman that is dedicated to him and that is dedicated to his cause there is something about that heart that pulls at almighty god there is somebody who if you're genuine and true to him if you are genuine and true to his cause there is something about that person that catches the attention of almighty god he pays keen attention and takes detailed note of how we esteem him and his words he is very particular about his word he said i elevate my word even above my very name there is something about god and his word the persons that take his word seriously the persons that try as best as they can to align themselves with the word of the living god the persons who said thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path and therefore try to order their steps in his word god takes very keen and pays very close attention to that kind of individual that individual who highly esteem god god looks at them in a very special way and with a very special eye somebody praise the lord and so he made a very piercing statement at one particular point and i believe that even today those that statement reverberates amen strong as strong as ever i hear him saying to the prophet the prophet samuel many many years ago in first samuel chapter 2 and verse 30 wherefore the lord god of israel saith i said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever but now the lord saith be it far from me for them that honor me i will honor and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed there is something about god we sometimes take him for granted but i'm here this morning to remind us of exactly who the sovereign god is i'm here this morning to remind us uh, as to how the god of heaven views things and the perspective that he puts something the man that treat god lightly god is not going to give him the things that he gives to others there are some folks uh, that say god is god and he loves everybody equally of course uh, uh, John 3 16 says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish by reading into that scripture we realize that God loves all of us and that is a fact but then after we surrender to him after we give our lives to him 
after we start aligning ourselves with the word of the living God, we find that there are folks who take it more seriously than others. You will find the man who makes the effort to sacrifice and to pray because he wants to be drawn closer to God. You will find the man or the woman who makes the extra effort and goes the extra mile to do the things that please God simply because they want to please God. And I would like us to understand that God Almighty looks out and sees these things. He sees the extra sacrifice. He sees the extra mile. He realizes the man who goes out of his way to stand up for what is right. He recognizes the woman that stands up no matter what. Amen for the thing that is right simply because it is in the word of Almighty God. It might cause me pain. It, it might cause heartache. But it is in the word of God. And because it is there and it is the word of God. And God honors his, very, his word above his very name. Then I'm going to stand upon the word of God. It doesn't matter what it costs. I am willing to pay the price. There is something about God that he moves and gravitates towards that heart. Wherever that heart is. Oh, can we praise the Lord? Wherever that heart is, God is going to gravitate to them. And that soul, that life, that heart is going to find that they receive very often what is called the favor of God. It is not everybody, amen, that receives the favor of God in a particular and personal way. Yes, we receive his favor when we got salvation. But now God gets personal after a while. And so sometimes we are praying and we send a prayer request. And we say, pray that God grant me favor so that when I go to the job, I get it. And sometimes we do and God smile upon us and grant unto us his favor. But then at other times it doesn't happen for a number of reasons. But one of them is that his favor might not be upon you at that time because you're just not the person that he would have gravitated to by virtue of your commitment to him. And so it is important that we understand that there is this thing called God's favor. He pours it on the saints who dares to stand for him. No matter what the cost, the consequence, no matter what will come, I'm going to stand on the word of God. I'm going to pray at the time that I must pray. I'm going to be at church when it is church time. It doesn't matter how tired I am. It doesn't matter how low I feel. I feel like I could just stay home this evening and put my feet up and relax but it's prayer meeting time and ah uh, i'm gonna go to prayer meeting because i want to be with the saints of god and i want to lift uh, jesus higher god takes note of some things that we do sacrificially and he is going to give us a return and many times that return is called uh, the favor of god favor is a special treatment. Favor is a privileged treatment. Oh, can we praise the Lord? Can we magnify the great God? You would be surprised. You know, parents, most parents are not, don't have special ones amongst their kids. Amen. They treat all of them equally. It is usually like that. In many instances, it is like that. But you do have situations where many times, uh, although they are equally loved, although they are equally respected, although they are equal in terms of what is given to them over time to go to school and to do this, sometimes because of the, the, the temperament and the way that one particular one operates, you will find one or the other parent, even though they don't disclose it, they may say, my God, this one is just always obedient. No matter how he is being 
punished no matter how he is being chastised no matter how he is going through the mills he's not gonna turn around and curse after me he's gonna say okay mommy okay daddy i did wrong i'm gonna fix it and there is something about a heart like that that pulls at almighty god there is something about a heart that although it is going to cost us something tremendous we are still gonna do the right thing simply because that is what please god and god has a way that he sees that happening and so he pulls up and take note and make preparation to visit you with his favor the bible as i started out by saying god is a god of order and he was the one that established the order that the older must be the one to receive the birthright the older must be the one that gets the blessing the older must be the one that becomes the priest so to speak of the house and that has been the practice of the people of israel over time but as i said god is sovereign he is the living god he does things how he sees fit and although he makes the rule we don't want to say he breaks it because he is the rule and so he can easily just do what he wants to do esau came first and he should have got the birthright but guess what it was snatched from him by jacob and god did not cut him off God accepted Jacob nevertheless. There is something about God we need to understand. As bad as we classify the Jacob, as much as we say he was a supplanter, as much as we say he was a deceiver, as much as we say he was a scammer, call him anything you want to call him, chastise him any way you want to chastise him. But when it comes to the things of God, Jacob was at the front of the line. Jacob did not care what was happening, who, where, when, and why. He knew the value of the birthright. He knew the value of the blessing. He knew where it would put him in terms of his stead with Almighty God. And so he was desperate to go after that because that would put him, amen, at the front line where God is concerned. God is always going to stretch out and put his favor upon those that want to have him as the first in their lives. Oh, can we praise the Lord? Can we praise the Lord? So the supplanter, the receiver, the scammer, receive God's favor and God elevated him we need to understand that this old Jacob was the same one that because God's favor rested upon him his name was changed from Jacob to Israel as a prince thou hast prevailed as a prince thou hast forged ahead and no longer will your name be Jacob but your name will be Israel you shall prevail my favor is upon you oh can we praise the lord can we praise the lord favor is when sometimes you're at the back of the line and because of a whole lot of things that transpired you end up being at the back of the line i will not say today that i have the favor of god because i can't boast where that is concerned and none of us should boast where that is concerned god gives and turns up with favor upon whom he will based on what he sees but i'm i was at the supermarket a few days ago and i just wasn't feeling well i just wanted to and when i got there and i saw the crowd people were on the outside and all of that kind of when i eventually reached inside the line at the cashier went down into the aisles where you pick up things I said, oh my God. And I just had to pick these things up and I was now at the back of the line. My God. And I said, God, I, I, I am not often, it's not often that I don't feel well. But I just never feel up to it that day. I just never feel. Me. And I said, God Almighty, help. And I was they're pondering if I should walk away and leave the trolley and go home and explain to John, Mark, and Kyle that I had to leave the things. 
And I said, it will be easier to do that. But I said, God, help. I was on the verge to leave. But then all of a sudden, I see a lady with a cash pan in her hand. And she walked past me and walked past everybody else. I don't know her. Is a cashier going to one of the empty positions. And all the lines were way back. And I am at the back of the line. And when that cashier reached the middle and was going, she just stopped. And she looked around at everybody. And her eyes caught mine. And four eyes were just there. And she just shifted her head. She just shifted her head. No, I didn't know what it means, but I, I just felt something say, follow her. And I just take my trolley and say, excuse me. And everybody move, and I just start to move. And, I, and she just went into one of the, the cubicles, put in her tray, and I who was at the back of the line, was now at the front of the, of the line at that new, and everybody started to scamper from where they were to come into the new empty line, and I was at the front. I heard people kissing their teeth. I heard people making grumbling sounds, but I did not care. When it comes to the favor of God, people will curse, people will swear, people will kiss their teeth. People will say, this shouldn't have happened, but God is God. If you have a problem with his favor being poured out upon me, don't talk to me. Go talk to him. Oh, can we praise the Lord? And this is exactly what happened to Jacob. We need to understand that God has shown this over and over in the Bible. Reuben was the firstborn. Reuben was the one that should have had the birthright. Reuben is the one that should have had a lot of things happening to him. Messiah should have come through the line of the firstborn. But it wasn't Reuben. It wasn't anybody else. It was Judah four down the line. There is something about Judah. When Judah means praise. When Judah was going through his difficulties. Judah knew how to step back and to lift his hands and to praise God. There is something about when we praise and worship God. There is something about when we magnify God in spite of what we are going through. The preacher last week told us that Daniel was taken away from his home in Israel and he left Jerusalem and was taken over to Babylon. When he was in Israel, when it was time for prayer, Daniel would open his windows and he would pray to the living God. That was what he did and nobody troubled him. And I heard the preacher say it last week. And then they took Daniel now and carried him into a strange land. While he was in the strange land, this was his practice. This was what he knew. This was his experience with God. But while he was in Israel, nobody would have troubled him. No, he's in Babylon. And at the start, everything was going well. But then they plotted against him. And now his life was at stake. But although he knew that his life was at stake, he was not going to bend. He was not going to bow. He was not going to put it off. This is how I serve my God. And this is how my God accepted me. I'm going to do what I always did. Let me tell you something. I hear, I believe I hear the living God saying, Gabriel, come here. I want you to take this package. And I want you to go down to Babylon. Because I have a favor that I'm going to extend to that man, Daniel. Can you see how he maintains his integrity? Even though he's in a strange land. Even though he's not where the temple is. Even though he's not where the presence of God would be in a particular place. He's in a strange place. But he continues to live right. He's in a secret place where nobody can see him and know. Nobody in Israel would know. But he continued to live right. Because he was not living to please men. He was not living to show men anything. This was a personal thing with him and almighty God. And so in the quiet place where there was nobody else from Israel, so to speak, that knew him, he decided that he was going to maintain 
who he was and his relationship with Almighty God. Let me tell you what God is looking for. Not the Christian who comes to church and jump and shout to let everybody see them. That we have too much of that everywhere around the world. God is not looking for the one who makes the loudest shout or the one who has the softest voice. No, no, no. God is looking for a heart that is set on him that no matter what or where I'm going to be a Christian. I hear the song right and say, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Because that is what moves God to pouring out his favor upon us. So can we praise the Lord? That is what moves God to pouring out his divine favor upon us. So Rahab was a prostitute. She was not a part of the family of Israel. No, no, no. But when the spies came in and she recognized that these were people of God and they served the God of heaven that she heard about and how this God was great and showed himself strong on the behalf of the people of Israel. She recognized who she was dealing with and so she humbled herself and dedicated herself to protecting the heritage of Almighty God and God took note of it. So God up above took time out and say Gabriel I have another package for you to deliver but God I've never seen you deal with Gentiles but oh, don't forget that I am God I am God I can break the rule because I am the rule it was a time when his people uh, his personal heritage was the people of Israel he was not dealing with Gentiles but he went into the house of Rahab the prostitute and he poured his favor upon that house so that when judgment came later on they were protected because they found favor with God why the dedication of this prostitute to protecting the heritage of God the dedication of this Gentile woman because she understand who God was. There are folks who when they are in a quiet place, they forget God. There are folks who when they believe that nobody's seen them, they forget God. There are folks who when they come under a little bit of pressure, they buckle to the pressure and say, God will understand Oh, we need to understand that there are folks who at a quint will walk away and leave this gospel. There are folks who knows the word of God and who under certain circumstances would follow in the word. But let the circumstance change. Let things seem to go against them. Let it appear as if things are going away and leave them. And they will forget who God is and what God said in his word. And they will be a different set of people. But I'm telling you today, saint of the most high God, if we want to receive the favor of God, let us be resolute. Let us be strong and be tenacious and be like pit bulls that I'm going to stand upon the word of God no matter what. It doesn't matter what it costs me. I'm willing to pay the price. Daniel opened his windows until they held on to him and said, let's kill this man. But what I found is that favor won't stop us from going into the lion's den, you know. God's favor won't stop us from going in the den. But I can tell you if the favor of God is with you, the lion can't eat you. That's the favor of God. He didn't budge. He didn't bend. He didn't bow. And he, the almighty God has a way where he always turns up for the person who sticks their neck out for him. He that esteem me, I will esteem. He that treats me lightly, takes me for granted, scorn at my word, that person I will lightly esteem.
That's the word of the living God. He will lightly esteem such a person. Now, the text that we read as I gear up to close, the text that we read told us that Jacob was now up in age. Jacob was now an old man. Jacob was now getting ready to depart this life. And he was gearing up to pronounce the blessing upon the children of his son Joseph. There was the elder Manasseh and the younger Ephraim. And Joseph brought them up to Jacob as the custom was for him to rest his hand on the head of the older and transfer the blessing, amen, from generation to generation. And so Jacob got the two boys together and brought them to, sorry, Joseph got the two boys together and brought them to Jacob and said, Daddy, here are my boys, bless them. And so what Joseph did, he took, uh, amen, Manasseh, the elder one, in his left hand and put him into Jacob's right hand. And he took Ephraim, the young one, in his right hand and put him in Jacob's left hand. So that the older would have had Jacob's right hand on his head. And the younger would have had Jacob's left hand on his head. Because that was the order. That was what God established. That was how they worked over time. But I told us that there is something about the way that Almighty God operates. He doesn't always follow the order. So don't think that anybody can predict God. God is God and he's sovereign. And he needs nobody to give him advice. He is his own advisor. And so God spoke and whispered into the ears of Jacob and said, Jacob, the blessing is not going to Manasseh the older, but I'm going to pass the blessing on to Ephraim the younger because I've seen something in Ephraim that makes me want to pour my favor upon him. This is how God Almighty will have seen something. Not that we can do anything to get salvation because this is not salvation. This is now divine favor. And a man that's, whose heart is right towards God. A man who even if death comes, make up his mind that I'm going to stand upon the word of God. God is always going to take note of you. And if we dare to be bold and brave and walk with God in spite of him, Take my word today that his favor is going to come searching after you and it's going to find you, oh saint of the most high God. Don't back back. Don't backslide. Don't turn around. Don't settle for less than what is in the word of God. You don't have to. He's going to open a door for you. Oh, can we praise the Lord? Everybody is getting married now. Everybody is doing their thing now. And nothing is happening for me. So you think. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to skip out of church. And I'm going to get my little boy or girl. And I'm going to come back in church. Those things. Forget those things. If the word of God say, be faithful to me, almighty God. Be faithful to me, almighty God. I know a sister who wanted to get married in her 20s. And my God, now in her 50s, she going to get married. I know something. I see God do some work. Just hold on to the word of Almighty God. Be a Christian. Favor will follow you. And if God send it out, it's not coming back. People might change things around. But let me tell you, the Bible said Joseph put the thing in order. I say, so it must go. But when it comes to God, God is the one that reads heart. And if God said, no man, is he my want my favor on. Make me see which man can change that. It cannot be changed. It has to go the way of Almighty God. So, so, so Ephraim, over there, stand up, Brother Andrew. We're calling you Ephraim the Younger. Yes, yeah, stand up right there. First time, if it wasn't COVID, I could hold you here, sir. But keep the distance. Come, Brother Prince. Man, I said it, the elder. Yes, man, come look nearer. Mighty God. So here is Jacob. 
call you Manasseh, the older, and you Ephraim, the younger. So when Joseph brought them to stand before Jacob, you are the younger, Ephraim, the older, Manasseh. Well, Joseph brought them and put them in the order. This is my right hand. It is supposed to rest on the older. This is my left hand. It is supposed to rest on the younger. And Joseph placed them in that order because that was the custom. He saw him see it. He saw him know it. He saw God did establish it. But when it comes to God, and listen, Jacob was now blind. The Bible said him couldn't see. So him not even know which one of them is old or younger. You know, him don't know. Joseph just bring the two sons. And because the man was blind, Joseph put them in the order. So that all him do is just come and put him hand on them and bless. But when it comes to God, when it comes to favor, when don't run and carry on and so if God sees your heart and see that you love him and see that you're serving him and see that you're going according to his words no matter what when the time comes nobody can move God's favor from you if it is yours it is yours and Jacob tried Joseph tried to put the thing in order but the blind man said come near come near and him just goes so and cross it. The man just crossed. The Bible said, Jacob wittingly crossed his hand. What it mean? It wasn't accidental. It was purposeful. He knew what he was doing. He was being led by Almighty God. I don't care who you are. Nobody can take away the favor of God from you. I challenge the saints of Almighty God. Walk with him. Walk in his word. Hold on to the things that are truthful and right. Even if it cost you your life. Because that was what Daniel did. And he received favor. And at the end of the day. Daniel was elevated even higher and continued until a new regime came and he died in his good old age. Being called by the angel thou that are highly favored, highly loved. He wittingly purposely don't run away and think you will move to go find God's favor. Let God's favor find you. And all it is that we must do is be humble. Be truthful and sincere. Yes? Those two go together. And secondly, be dedicated to the work and word of Almighty God. I challenge a saint anywhere you are. I challenge the saint of God anywhere you are. Dare to be a Daniel. Dare to be a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Dare to be a David who was in the back part of the wilderness when everybody was playing domino. Or scrabble. And all his brothers were having a grand time. He was back in the wilderness looking after sheep. And they thought that it was all that he was doing. But he made himself happy by writing songs of praise. And writing psalms to the most high God. And in the secret place where nobody could see him and know him, the man was building up his experience with God. Let it be that when you are in the secret of your home, you're still a Christian. I want to be an old-time Christian with a Christian 
Eh? Love. Oh, that I will be an old time Christian. What's the old time Christian? If you want to be a real Christian, the real Christian is not the one who comes to church every Sunday morning for everybody to see them and to hear them. The proof of the real Christian as I close. This is what is testing the metal of a real Christian. When you're locked away at home, where sometimes you reach home and nobody else is there, what do you do? What do you watch? What do you do with yourself? When you go over to your friend, even though you're keeping the social distancing, what do you do that you wouldn't do if you were in church? If you wouldn't do it in church, be careful that when you're in private, you would dare to live the same way. Yes. Maintain your integrity. Walk with God. Follow desperately after his word. Be dedicated to him. Be truthful and sincere in the heart. And I guarantee you the favor of God is going to find you. God bless you today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes, if you're at home, I'm going to ask you to stand right now. I'm going to ask those of us that are here, oh, I want to be a Lord. Because that is what's going to pull God to us. Be true to yourself, saint of God. Be true to the word of God. And his favor will find you. Sing that chorus. Lord, I want to be a Christian.
to receive a word from heaven. I pray right now, God, that you will bless the man of God. Continue, Lord, just to inspire him. Continue, Lord, to lead him by your spirit. I pray right now, God, for every heart that has received the word. Amen. Help us, God, that this word will fall on good hearts. Help us, Lord Jesus, that we'll be Christians, God. Oh God, when people are seeing us and when persons are not seeing us, God, I will walk worthy, God, of the calling, God, that you have called us, Jesus. Help us, Lord Jesus, to set ourselves together. Help us, Lord Jesus, to mortify, God, the deeds of the flesh. And help us, Lord Jesus, to get ourselves already waiting for your coming. I pray, God, to every heart this morning, touch them. Let it be placed, let your word be placed on good soil this morning. I pray right now, God, Jesus, that as we are about to, Lord God, move into another segment of this service, that your hands, your mighty hands, will be upon it. And God, that our hearts will be ready. God, this is the profound word given to us, that we can be ready to take part in your supper. Let your will be done. We thank you, God, for today's service. Thank you, Lord, for the worship part. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the word. We thank you, Lord, for every person that partake. We thank you, Lord, for the saints. Oh, God, who tuned in this morning. But above all, it's a fact God. Thank you, God, for the hearts that are going to be transformed, for the lives that are going to be changed. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And we look to you, the great God of heaven. Do what only you alone can do again in our lives. The author, the finisher of our faith. The God of heaven, just in my prayer, even now, in Jesus. to learn he's probably hard of hearing as brother Kirk said maybe his head is tough hard to learn but here it is that we would normally on a Wednesday have communion and here it is that right in the Sunday morning service, we are going to be having the Lord's Supper. Folks are right across Jamaica where our saints are. And across the world where folks are tuning in, have decided to partake of the emblem with us. I believe it's a very solemn occasion. I believe it is something that has tremendous blessings associated with it. And so it is not a mere going through the motion, but this is something that ministers to the people of God. Usually we would all be here and it would appear that the absence of a gathering would stop a lot of things from happening. But Satan get knocked again. Because we need to understand that even though we are separated by time and space, some folks in the US and Canada are uh, one hour ahead of us. Folks in other parts of Canada are two hours behind us. And so we are separated by time and space. And yet, we can still participate and partake and be blessed at this time as we go into the Lord's Supper. What a good God. Wherever you are at this time, can you just put your hands together with a round of applause to the living God. You are victorious again. You have won as usual again. Our God cannot lose. Years ago, a minister preached and he said the fight is fixed it's fixed 
Yes. It, it, it's set up already. And God cannot lose. And so I'm happy this is it afternoon to invite all those and to say greetings and welcome to the Lord's table. A blessed place to sit. We're going to make this afternoon's supper count for what it is really worth. It's not a mere going through the motion. Do not let it be a mundane exercise. This is a moment to cherish because we are going to together in our separate spaces. Yes, remember what Jesus did and that he is our Lord and our God. We are going to remember that once we stay under the blood and recognize the power of the sacrifice that he made nearly, nearly 2,000 years ago, uh, it is going to give us a new push, an extra drive, yes, to forge ahead. I believe we are rounding the final lap, you know. Somebody with background in sports will understand that when you're coming around the final bend on the 300, we're almost coming on that stretch to head down to the finish line. I, I really feel that we are coming around, coming onto the street, and I want to charge and admonish the people of God. Yes, right across the length and breadth of the world, once you're watching, I charge you today, I admonish you, what we are going to do right now, make it count. Yes, I am going to explain something in a minute or two, and then we go into supper. But let's stand. If you're, if you can, let's stand a bit. Praise God. The cleansing stream. Come on, we're going to join in, in. Everybody at home, this is time to stand. This is time to stand. Everybody at home, this is time to stand. And we're going to sing together. Hallelujah. The cleansing stream. I see, I see. Yes. I see, I see, I plunge and roll, it plans and free, oh, praise the Lord, it plans at me, it plans at me, yes, plans at me, the planting stream.
The musicians will continue to play, but their heads will be bowed. And we are going to pray. And we are going to ask for forgiveness. None of us are going to go into supper without making it right with Almighty God. And so we want to use this opportunity to pray. Even if there are things that we cannot see. Even if there are things that you don't even know about. We are going to come clean right now before Almighty God. Because we are going to make it count right now. This is a powerful experience. The Lord's Supper. This is a powerful emblem. This communion service. And so having worshipped God, having had a word, having been positioned right, it is fitting right now that we make sure that every spot every stain every blemish we just want to let this be a new beginning oh yes we want to let this be a new beginning just before we pray you would know that Passover that was implemented years ago in Israel Yes, is where we derive what we now call communion. It had its genesis in the book of Exodus. God instructed the people that they were to all go into their individual homes and that they were to take the blood of the Lamb and that they were to apply the blood on the lintel and the doorposts. Yes, and stay inside and roast that lamb. And I'm going to tell you when to eat it and what you are to do. And that very night, he told them that the death angel was going to pass over. And when that angel passed over the land of Egypt and you are in your house... But it is covered by the blood of the Lamb. Then not even that death angel can touch you. And it was a, an angel of God. It wasn't demons. It was an angel of God. And if the angel of God couldn't touch them. Because they were going to be in that place around that table with the lamb and the blood covering the door and the angel of God could touch them can I tell you that if we, are, if we deal with this emblem right if the angels of God couldn't dare to go where the blood was and where they were having the table with the lamb on the inside no demon in hell can touch and take from you what God has given to you. Many times we have given up what God has given up, given us. But I'm here to remind us that this emblem, that this table is very powerful. And if we recall that it is coming all the way back from that first Passover in the land of Egypt. And was commemorated year after year. Then we can understand that this is a powerful experience sitting around the table. Observe that it was every man in his house. And as we came over into the New Testament, I recognized that Jesus was saying something very significant. And he spoke to his disciples in Matthew chapter 26. And he told them to go do something. And I find it very, God is not taken off guard by anything simply because he's God. And here in St. Matthew chapter 26, verses 17 and 18. Now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, 
the disciples came to Jesus saying unto him where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover that's the question they asked and he Jesus said unto said go into the city to such a man and say unto him the master saith my time is at hand I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples I'm saying to somebody this afternoon we are keeping the Passover we are keeping communion at your house this afternoon it is a matter that is personal it is a matter that is a family affair we are having the Passover Jesus said to tell the man we are having it at his house it wasn't in an upper room it wasn't in a sanctuary it wasn't by a synagogue but tell the man we are coming to his house can I tell you we are having Passover at your house today and your house is going to be blessed I believe that it, your house is going to be blessed when they left Egypt that day after they ate at the table of Passover and they left the Bible said that when they left there was not one sick or feeble among them there was something powerful about this experience we have to take this thing with faith and know and understand hallelujah that if we dare to lift our faith and believe that this is not just a mundane, ordinary, regular thing. Because many of us have made it to become cheap and regular. And we do one thing now and we have Lord's Supper and then we go back. But we're going to change that. We're going to change that. This is a great experience. This is a powerful experience. God had some promises associated with this activity. Yeah, when they took it, he promised to send his angels to be with them. He promised to give them healing. He promised to protect them from their enemies. He said if the enemies came in one way, he was going to make sure that those same enemies fled seven ways that's almighty God that's the power of what we are going into now Exodus chapter 12 told us that it marked the beginning of years for the children of Israel a new year a new beginning I want us today to make this communion be a new beginning Yes, it's going to mark a turning point in our lives today. Because this is not ordinary. We are in our individual homes, apart from those of us that are here. Hallelujah. And this is going to mark the beginning of a new season when we eat today. Here is what I'm going to ask us to do. We are going to lift our faith. We are going to believe that as we put that bit of food in our mouth, as we drink from the cup together, I want our faith to be at its peak and understand that there is a tremendous blessing from God associated what, with what we are doing. It is definitely to remember the Lord's death until he comes. It is definitely to remember that he was bruised on the cross. And as we remember, it brings the whole episode closer home and we are drawn to him. That's definite. But there is something that is so powerful about this table that it activates 
blessings. It activates some things that flow from God to us simply because and simply if we take this table, sit at this table, and we eat worthily. Eat with understanding. Remember how it started. Remember the powerful things associated with it. And then when we go through the exercise, believe that we will be released, believe that we will be blessed, believe that our enemies, when they come to us one way, they are going to flee seven ways. And remember that it is going to draw us closer to Almighty God. Are you ready for communion? Are you ready for this New Testament Passover? Are you ready to eat at the Lord's table? It is going to be a new day and a new beginning. A turning point for you because this is not the regular table. We have made it new in our hearts. Oh, praise God. Can we bow our heads right now? Father in heaven, we bless your great name. We thank you, mighty God, that you have allowed us to be together in this fashion. To sit at the table in our respective homes. Right across the length and the breadth of this earth, wherever folks are tuned in to us. I pray, mighty God, that you will look down, thou who search the hearts and try the reins, you who see all motives and knows what is in man and need not that any tell you what is in man. We come before you right now. I lift up the people of God. I present myself. I present your people. We come before you. We are on our knees. We are on our faces right now. We are bowed with sackcloth and ashes because we recognize that we are nothing. We are nobody in the sense that you are everything and we can only look to you. Lord Jesus, I pray right now that you will wash us. I pray, Father in heaven, that you will cleanse us. I pray, Lord, that you will, from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet, let the rivers of living water flow over our souls. We don't want to take and partake of this table unworthily today. We want to make sure that every area, every facet, every part of our lives are fully surrendered. And we want to make this day a day of new beginnings. We want this to be a new year, a new moment in our lives. We are going to start again as of today, as at this table. Hear our cry. Forgive our sins. Make us whole. The song, and we apply those words, whiter than snow. Lord, whiter than snow. Lord, wash me, wash us, and we shall be whiter than snow. Lord Jesus, we are your people. We are the sheep of your pasture. We walk with you. We look to you. We bless your great name. Thank you. Have us to be new people. As a result of sitting at this table today, we bless your name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
my weakness. What a God, what a God. Oh, my soul. Yeah, pray down. 
Amen.
excited right now. Minister Martin, you want to come take that wine and we're going to pass it around. All those that are at home, praise God, those that are at home. Get your wine together. Get your emblems together. Have your bread or whatever unleavened facility it is. Savior, the great God who became our Savior. Uh, this is a very solemn moment because we are remembering the entire episode at Golgotha's Hill. We are remembering what happened a few years ago when Indeed, it was a bitter cup, but he was willing to pay the ultimate price because this was the only thing that could have guaranteed that man have a right standing with God Almighty again. He was going to have to take upon himself the sins of the whole world. Every man from Adam, including those of us today and those who will come tomorrow, their sins were placed on his shoulders. What a weight! And he cried at one point, it's not my will, I wish that this, I, I could this cup pass notwithstanding, not my will, but thine be done. And can we imagine it? Can we fathom it? The great God Almighty, the one who said, let there be and there was. The one that in speaking to man said, we were thou when the morning stars sang. The one who threw all the stars into place and hung the universe into place without any support. He now had to change gear, take upon himself the form of man to save man that he made, and he did it. 
And so right now, as we hold the emblems in our hands, I'm going to ask us for a couple of seconds to shift our focus from directly looking into the television screen or the phone or the whatever instrument you have whatever smart instrument you have I really want all our focus right now to be shifted I want us to transition back in time and stand in the crowd at Golgotha's Hill I want as you hold the wine and the bread in your hands I want your mind to listen carefully to the sound the screaming the hurt by his family and the screaming by others crucify him get rid of him I want us to listen carefully I want us to look on that man who claimed that he was the son of God as he they hanging on that cross. Look at him. He was only covered around from the waist, probably down to his knees, if so far. And it was easy to see the blood oozing from his side. Look at him. It was easy to see the blood oozing from his feet. Look at it. Because that's what this is about, remembering his death being there feeling it seeing it understanding that it was for me my savior died look at his hands both of them blood dripping running down the wrist running right down to his elbows because they are stretched out and then dripping to the ground Look at his brow. There is a crown, yes, because he's the king of glory. But it's not a crown of gold. It is a crown of thorn. Look at it. So blood oozing from his forehead. His face battered. Disfigured. Blood oozing from his left hand. Blood oozing from his right hand. Blood oozing from his side. That stuck a spear in it. Blood oozing from his feet. And then the sweat with the salt now mixes with the blood and it burns. Ha, Dabasanda. It burns. Hallelujah. And he's going through all of that. Hallelujah. For me, for you. Think about it for the next couple of seconds. And I'm going to indicate when we eat together. As we think. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hear the writer. Couldn't believe it. Asking the question, was it for me? For me alone? The Savior left his glorious throne. The dazzling splendor of the sky. Was it for me? My Savior died. And then he answered with a refrain. It was for me. Yes, all for me. Oh, love of God. So great, 
so free. Oh, wondrous love. I'll shout and I'll sing. He died for me, my Lord and King. What a day. What a God. What a Savior. At this time, I'm going to ask us first to eat the bread. Can we do it right now together? In Jesus' name. And drink of the vine. Can we do it right now together? In Jesus' name.
but the only your own home with your family. This is a family of fear. Jesus said in Matthew 26, tell him that we're going to have supper at his house. And we are at your house. Your house is going to be blessed today because of this emblem. I want our faith to be up here. Anticipating something great. Something different. Something is going to happen to your house that is going to lift the standard higher. Something is going to happen at your house because we dare to partake of the emblem in the house. Your house. And I want our faith to be at that place. Look for something from heaven because of what happened right here, right now, right in your home. It's going to happen. So as you wash, we're giving you a few moments as we continue to worship God. Yes. Just for me. Just for me. Verse again. Where the cross will always represent the love God has for me. When the Lord of glory heaven sent, gave all on Calvary. It is just for me. Oh 
Thank you for tuning in today. And you know the Bible says in Acts chapter 2 verse 37, when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and they said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? I want to leave a word with you. Repent, the Bible says, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If you're not baptized, if not the Holy Ghost, that's the word for you today. You need to repent of your sins. Get baptized in his name. And God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. Let us pray right now. Great God. Again, we thank you, God, for a wonderful service. We thank you, God, that you showed up today. Your words, you, you confirmed your word. Where two or three are gathered together. Touching anything concerning you, you're in the midst. God, we thank you, God, that you came in our midst today. You blessed us. And God, we thank you, God, for the communion that we partook of today. I pray, God, that you'll help that every person will not take it unworthily. But God, that it will be a blessing to their house, be a blessing to their lives, and on this time forth, even forevermore. We pray for every unsaved that was tuned in to this uh, stream today. I pray, God, that if they have heard anything else, but they'll hear, God, that they need to surrender their lives to you. Uh, what will it profit a man to gain this whole world and to lose his soul? Help him, Lord, to be convicted, but not only to be convicted, but to move at your word and be baptized in your name. And to receive the infilling of the Holy Ghost, which comes directly from you. God, as we are about to go, I pray, God, that you'll bless every household. Bless every person that viewed in today. And help us, God, that if it is your will, oh God, that we might come back on Wednesday, God, to hear another Bible study. And on Sunday again, to get another word, another worship session from you. Let your will be done. As we look to you, the great God of heaven, thank you again for in everything we give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. God richly bless you. God bless you and thank you again for tuning in. And let the peace of God go with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen.